Good morning everyone, welcome to Aegis Moto Adventures. Hey, today we're gonna go from Sault Ste. Marie to Thunder Bay. It's gonna be another 400 some mile ride today, but I'm looking forward to it. It's been decades since I went around Lake Superior, so it should be a fun ride. We'll see you soon on the road. Ready to start day two on the road. It sounds like it's going to be a great day. When Gord and I were discussing our travel strategy, we agreed that riding longer miles was reasonable because we could travel at higher speeds on the highway. This meant we were forgoing our normal routine of backcountry roads for a more expedited route. It's easy to underestimate the time needed for an Alaskan trip by land. Even a quick trip to Alaska by road is measured in months, not weeks or days. So our first few stretches will be on Highway 17, a part of the Trans-Canada Highway. I wouldn't consider the road along the North Shore of Lake Superior as remote. However, it is sparsely populated. This fact makes the scenery spectacular because of the miles and miles of forest and lakes. Sometimes the highway is right along Lake Superior and at other times it meanders through the forest and provincial parks. I can guarantee you'll like this ride. Off to our left is Lake Superior. With a surface area of about 32,000 square miles, Lake Superior is the world's largest freshwater lake and third by volume. Holding 10% of the world's fresh water makes Lake Superior a very valuable resource indeed.
I think it's important to point out that we have all traveled through this area before and visited points of interest. So our plan is not to make a lot of stops, but we're coming up on a gas stop with some fun aspect to it. The Agawa Crafts and Canadian Carver Shops along the Trans-Canada Highway makes for a great gas and brake stop. Plan on staying a little longer to have a look around at all the cool stuff. It really is a fun spot to stop. What a fun stop and relaxing place for us to get some gas. It was a lot of fun. But keep in mind, between Sault Ste. Marie and Wawa, this is the only place to get gas. So it is really a good place to make a stop if you need to. Reaching Alona Bay means we are approaching Lake Superior Provincial Park. At 600 square miles, one can experience cliffs along the shoreline and backcountry hiking. If you're moto camping, this would be a fantastic spot to overnight. How beautiful is this, huh? The Agawa River runs through the park and empties into Agawa Bay. Ancient pictographs appear on a rock face along the lake and are at least 1,500 years old. A great way to visit the area is by train that originates from Sault Ste. Marie and travels through the Agawa Canyon.
the Old Woman River's namesake isn't from a historical person, but a rock face along the bay that resembles, well, an old woman. We bypass Wawa and continue north around the lake. We'll make a gas stop further down the road. About halfway between Wawa and White River, at Desolation Lake, we run into summer construction. This is an unusual for Canada. But I find it interesting the difference between construction in the States and Canada. In the U.S., there would be concrete barriers and flashing signs and all kinds of warnings and uh, safety measures. <laughs> but in Canada, there's a guy with a slow down sign, maybe some cones. I dare say Canada's drivers are more courteous and cautious. The Trans-Canada Highway moves inland after Wawa, and it won't get back to the shoreline until you reach Marathon. But from Marathon, we'll follow the shoreline all the way to Thunder Bay. White River would make a great place to stop, but we don't need fuel or a break yet, so we press on through town.
At White Lake, there is a provincial park. This would be a great place to camp, but boating and fishing would be a big attraction. I don't know if you can rent canoes here, but boy, that would be awesome if you could. The Bridge at the Narrows is considered a historical landmark. Once we reach Marathon, the highway comes closer to the shoreline. We'll get some great views of Lake Superior from here on out, but not before fueling up. Wow, this is just beautiful through here. Look at this. Boy, you can't hardly get better uh, scenery than this. Awesome. Another construction zone with a self-guided uh, traffic light to get you through from one side to the other. They have a little temporary bridge here that is uh, an engineering marvel. That's pretty cool. The big power lines that we're seeing is a good indication that we're getting closer to Thunder Bay here, because I'm sure that's where they're all headed.
I wish we had time for Terrace Bay. This might be a tourist hotspot, but for good reason. Nearby, they have the Agassiban Falls and Gorge, the Cascade Islands, the Slate Islands Provincial Park, and a lighthouse. This definitely needs to be investigated for a future trip. Boy, what a neat spot here. Wouldn't it be cool to have a little cottage on a lake like this? It'd be so much fun. You could kayak, go fishing. Since we used to live on the lake, I've kind of done that for uh, over 20 years, so I have uh, had lake life before. But boy, I sure see the draw on some of these more remote lakes. That would be a lot of fun. We're back along the Lake Superior shoreline here. It's a beautiful area and there's several offshore islands that would be pretty uh, neat to visit. Isle Royale uh, sits off of the shoreline from Thunder Bay, but it's actually in the United States. Um, there is camping there and it's a pretty cool park I hear. I'd like to go there sometime. Apparently they have wolves on the island even. It'd be a really neat place to visit and camp. And just like that, we get to do a little bit of uh, gravel road riding here. Our bikes are made for this, so that compacted gravel, we ride right over it like it's nothing. It's actually kind of fun for us. Here we are riding over the Nipigon River Bridge. This cable stayed bridge is of new construction and gives one a great view of the river. Well, as we get close to Thunder Bay, I run out of gas. Luckily, I had spare gas with me and I was able to get going pretty quickly. The problem is, I shouldn't have run out of gas yet. And to add insult to injury, the crew continues on not knowing my predicament. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> wow, we are all whooped. I'm here to tell you, two days in a row, we've just ground out the miles here. And we're pretty sore and tired. And then we had an issue with our cardos and we finally got that sorted out so we're all hooked up. And I found out today I've got a little bit of a problem with my fuel system on my bike that could cause us problems later on. But we're gonna try and get that all sorted out uh, probably tomorrow or the next day and see if we can figure out a way around that. So that's it for today. We'll see you tomorrow morning when we hit the road for my Thunder Bay to Winnipeg. See you then. Take care.